Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary. We give God praise for His grace and for His favor and for His mercy in a time like this, in a time when so many people are really getting more and more scared because suddenly we have begun to get local spread, as they say, locally induced cases in Trinidad, uh, not yet in Tobago, but in the nation as a whole. What we have been fearing and really the authorities have been steering the nation uh, um, away from, it has now come. But we who know God, we who are kingdom citizens, we are decreeing that the grace, mercy, and favor of God are flowing upon us. I give you a distinction between mercy and grace. Mercy is said to be not getting what you deserve. Remember a long time when our parents had the liberty of just, just warming up our skin, as they would say. She would say, your mommy would say, your daddy would say, I'll give you what you're looking for, you know. And you beg and, and maybe your daddy told you that, but your mommy say, oh gosh, don't, don't give him. Don't, don't beat him. That was mercy. Grace is when you were supposed to get what you deserve. But then you were given, quote unquote, a bligh, as they say. And instead, you were lavished with, you were given things that you did not work for. That is grace. And favor is what moves the giver to lavish you with the things that you did not deserve. All of that is wrapped up in the God that we serve. And we give him praise for his grace, his mercy, and his favor. We're not going to take that lightly. Let's cherish it. Amen. Because really speaking, our nation has been spared so far of the real tidal waves of the COVID infection. God has brought us through an election. Oh, yeah, he's brought us through an election, a very grueling, grueling one. And we know those whom he has allowed now to be our leaders will continue to give this nation a better and even chance. Not just to fight off the COVID, but to hedge the citizens the economy and all of that from the ravages of the worldwide trends. So, uh, just greeting you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, where we declare we are a people with a passion for the presence, the person, and character of God, where worship 
is a doing word, a verb, and not a noun. And we do declare we do worship. Why not join us when we do our worship? Every Sunday morning, we are online at 9 a.m. on our Facebook page, or you, you can uh, get to the YouTube page, and it is simple. Or even on our live stream, it is ddwc.tv or on our website divine destiny worship center.org or on our facebook just ddwc facebook and you will enjoy that service at nine every sunday morning and for now every wednesday thursday friday at 7 p.m your life will never be the same again. So welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny. And my God, we've been on a journey, a serious journey, looking to put sense to, and putting sense to God's sense to the season, which began across the earth with a, a lockdown as recommended by all governments, all leaders, stay home, stay safe, save lives, as the bastion of defense against the ravages of the coronavirus. But out of it, God has shown us that he is taking what was meant for evil to work out for good because he has a chance to deal with the family which is the bedrock of society, which is the core, the backbone of whatever society becomes. And thank God he has plugged us in to his mind as to what he is doing. And there is a book in the Bible, Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, which lays out as plainly as D, the process by which it must be done and we started in ephesians chapter 6 where we we, we held uh, the staring very steadily and mash the bricks pull up the handbrakes so that those intercessors who love to start their serious warfare with verse 10 of chapter 6, finally, my brethren, we pull the handbrakes and we say, don't go there yet. Because to get to there, using the preface to the truth, to the invitation, the preface, finally, we found out that you can't get to finally before you do what has to be done in sequence. And I tell you, this I call do the first things first. So to qualify, to declare, finally, put on the whole armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord. To get to that level, you know what we need to do? We need to backpedal. And we went into uh, chapter 6, verse 1, right down to verse 9, where we dealt with the family. Uh, at home where children must obey their parents and must honor their mother and the father and the fathers or the parents must not provoke them to, to wrath and then coming out of a well-balanced home we got workers who will be uh, very industrious and well-behaved and ethical and so on in the workplace and we will get bosses quote-unquote we will get managers and visionaries and entrepreneurs who will treat their workers right and, and, and be honest with their finances. But then we said, we we, we, we were reversing we, because you can't have the, the father and the mother and the children and so on without where we were last time, without the marriage covenant the way God wants it. And we have dug deep into it. And now we're going to deal with 
Ephesians 5, we'll continue to, to break it open. Ephesians 5 from verse 21 to verse 32, which is accepted as and labeled as the marriage law as set out by Apostle Paul. But we know there are some serious, serious uh, uh, discussions that we need to get into to break it open the way God intended it when he gave it to Apostle Paul. And we started uh, last week, uh, even the week before we hinted it about last week, we started to get into it, the question of submission. And it has been erroneously and sometimes very uh, laboriously and most times very painfully, yes, been attached to the wife, to the woman, the full load of submission to the point that many women like rodeo horses don't want to get married. They buck off from the time they, the guy, they don't mind hanging with the guy, but from the time he say, I want to get married. Because <sighs> no man is controlling me. And the man, oh my God, he want to get married because I'm going to keep her under subjection. And the Bible never said she should be under subjection as much as she'd be, she should be exercising submission. But then we hit upon it last week where we said most people begin to read the marriage law from verse 22. But really, it is supposed to begin in verse 21, which says submitting yourselves. Uh, take out the thing and you get submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And we came up with the basic kingdom principle that God intended. And that is this. Submission is mutual. Because if it says submit yourselves one to another, it means that both people carry equal responsibility in the submission continuum. Both people submit yourselves one to another. But then we also found out that uh, submit yourselves tells me that that verb is what? That verb is intransitive. That sentence has an intransitive verb. And the word intransitive means the action that the subject is taking cannot be transferred to the object because there is no object. That's grammar, simple grammar. So it did not say, uh, husband, submit your wife. Or wife, submit your husband. Then that will be, uh, it makes submit our transitive verb because one can transfer the, what? The action to another. In this case, it says it's a do-it-yourself thing. But since it says submit yourselves one to another, it means it's more than do-it-yourself as an individual, but it's do-it-yourself as a couple. Submit yourselves one to another. But, and there is a, 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 a base principle on which the submission, um, well, the submission principle is expected. It's in the fear of God. Seeing that God is looking at us, seeing that God is the one that sets the standard for the covenant, he who is the covenant maker and builder who gives us all that's needed to do it, he says, I want you during the time that you are married to what? Submit yourselves 
one to another. Later on, we'll come to find out what submit really means so that the, the woman will stop being a bucking horse. I don't want no man to control me. And the man must stop licking his lips and relishing the fact one of these days, a man are gonna put, as we say in Trinidad, push you under control. No, 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 no. No, 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 that's not what the scripture says. So, so now, now we come to the controversial part, the, the, the ticklish part, the part that has been so sorely misinterpreted and as such has been sold into the whole marriage question, into the whole male and female relationship question that many of the women don't want to buy it. They don't want to buy it because it's, 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 not, it's not something that they relish. So let's look now at Paul having said Submit yourselves one to another. And oh, I also want to add, add this to you. Anybody who is into law knows that for a law to really be effective, for a law to really cover the ground that the uh, drafter of the law, the legal draftsman, uh, had intended, there must be a preamble. Hallelujah. And that's why this is a perfect law, because verse 21 is the preamble to the marriage law. Submit yourselves one to another in extended um, language, the narrative will read. Submit yourselves one to another because submission is mutual. That's the preamble. A preamble sets the tone for what? Interpretation of a law. What's the tone and what's the spirit of submission? It's mutual. It is not singular. Mr. Man, you have the right to let your wife know. She must submit. No. Submit yourselves. Myself, Pastor Gemma's self, one to another. Good. And now he says, wives, this is how you do it. He says, wives, in executing the submission principle, it being mutual, you must know your scope and your jurisdiction of submission and the extent. So he says, wives, let me talk to you first. And may I tell you, he did not put the husbands off the hook because in verse 25, which we'll tackle another time, he says, husbands, love your wives. So he didn't say, wives, you submit yourself to your husband. And then say, husband, you could do whatever you want. He said, no, no, no. Let's see how we get it. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So a woman, a wife, cannot say, um, well, me, I only obey in Jesus. I, I, I only, I give my life to Jesus and I only live for Jesus. So, so, so man, you better move aside, take aside. No, it says, if you are submitting unto the Lord, then your submission to your husband should be what? Should be as you do it to the Lord. But, ooh, hold up. Don't just run away with that, brother man, if you are listening to me. Don't just run away with that. Because where you come in is this. For your wife to submit unto you as she does unto the Lord, you're going to have to take the role of the Lord 
And so if you are not flowing the way God wants you to flow, then you are almost illegitimizing your wife's submission. Because you have to do it like the Lord does it for the church. Because the next verse says, for, for, for. So for is linked, linking verse 23 to verse 22. Your wife will submit to you as unto the Lord as long as you, the husband, operates as the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church. And you're going to have to go into how Jesus Christ functions as head of the church for you, Mr. Husband, to really expect your wife to follow you as the church follows Jesus. To have your wife submit to you as the church must submit to Jesus, he being the head. So let me break this open, starting to break this, and next week we're going to go deeper into this headship thing. He says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. He's the savior of the body. Well, we'll come back to that. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And the Lord started to break this thing open to me. Is that first of all, what is ahead? Of what function does the head of a human being exist? Of what function is it obligated to? It says for you to understand the the function of the head. You have to look at the organs that are in the head. And once you start to look at the organs that are in the head, then you begin to understand the grave importance of being a husband. And when I started looking, it blew my mind. And I'm just going to touch on, on, on them right now and for next session we're going to go deeper we're taking our time you know what's in your head a brain what do you do with your brain you think hmm. oh my god husband you're the head what else is in the head eyes what do you use eyes for? To see. We'll come back to that. What's in the head? The air. What do you do with the air? You hear. You listen out for things. And you have to train your air so that you don't, in, you don't misinterpret what you hear and act upon it foolishly. But we'll come back to that. What else is in the head, ha, 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 the mouth, the tongue, the teeth. Husband, you are the mouth, the tongue, the teeth of the wife. <laughs> Husband. You are the eyes. Husband, you are the ears. You are the brain. And then just recently, I was doing a counseling and don't me that the head has a skull. The head has a very, I mean, strong, bony structure that really supposed to provide protection. 
for the rest of the body, some things that your body can't take in terms of pressure. It's your head that, that takes it. That's why if somebody tells you, look out, the first thing you do is protect your head. Because if your head gets injured, the rest of your body is compromised. And the Bible is saying to the wife, I want you to submit to your husband. Why? Because he is your head. But I throw it open to all husbands. Now, are you the protector of your wife? Are you the eyes? Are you the brain? Are you the air? Are you the mouth that provides words of life? Are you the teeth that puts a bite on things and really crips it? Are you the tongue? Uh, do, do you waver? James talked about it, a double-minded man. He said, because the tongue, the tongue is an unruly evil. What do you say to your wife? Oh, my word. We're going to go deeper into this in our next broadcast. Amen. So we give God praise. Thank you for, for, for listening to us today. And we don't just want you to hear. We want you to see what we are saying so that you would put into action that which you have seen and heard. So, God bless you. I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, where worship is a doing word, a verb, and not a noun. Saying to you, it was really good to have you with us on this broadcast. And until we meet again, know that you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You are a God idea. Because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet again. Amen. This is Pastor Donald Duncan of The Body Church, and I'm excited to share with you my brand new book, The Mystery of Time, Understanding the Time and Season You Are In. God has fit time into the continuum of eternity in such a way that it governs the human experience. In this, my seventh book, I look from seven different perspectives at the age-old question, what is time? I provide scriptural best practices for discerning God's timing and share effective tools for understanding the end times. Most importantly, I reveal through the life of Jesus the value of living according to God's schedule and tapping into the wisdom of the Holy Spirit for a revelation of the future. Pick up your copy today. You won't regret it. Available now at Amazon.com. Reach your goals through Jesus Christ. This has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.